Hi, this is Victoria Nolle and here with me again is Mr. Stephen Dell. He is a senior lecturer in energy law at the Center for Energy, Petroleum, Mineral and Policy at the University of Dundee. Uh, in the previous videos, we talked about um, grid and energy infrastructure. We also talked about renewable generation financing. And we also responded to some of the comments and questions from our viewers. I understand we're not going to be able to cover all the comments for now, but maybe later in future we shall uh, talk about all the different topics you wanted us to cover but in this particular video I'll be responding to a comment and suggestion from one of our viewers who sent me a message I'll just read it out hi Dr. Nalole I watched your video with Mr. Dow on long-term gas contracts and found it very helpful I would like to follow up on a point Stephen made about two types of agreements, that is depletion and supply, with regard to how best to deal with a situation where the seller's reserve volume gets adjusted owing to redetermination of a unified, unitized field. How does the seller ensure that he is not in breach where the volume in the reservoir becomes lower than the quantity pledged? or where the quantity becomes much higher in the reservoir than the quantity he is to supply to the buyer. Well, that was a very long comment and question. But before Mr. Stephen Dow responds to this particular issue, I'd like him to briefly introduce himself again. Thanks. I'm Stephen Dow. I'm Senior Lecturer in Energy Law at the Centre for Energy, Petroleum and Mineral Law and Policy at the University of Dundee. I have 20 years experience of teaching students from all around the world and hopefully I'm now reaching a wider audience through this. All right, thank you very much for the introduction. And yes, he is my former lecturer. So yeah, you need to hear from him. Uh, so going back to this comment from our viewer, I think it's about unitized. This is a very, very perceptive question. Mm -hmm. What's happened here is in a unitization, what happens is a single reservoir underlies two different blocks. So there are two sets of petroleum rights in play. And the government says the two different groups, the two different holders of the petroleum rights, have to get together to unitize so that they're developing the field as a single, as a single field rather than each sucking out of each end of the field and, and, and minimizing the amount of gas or the amount of oil they take. This is particularly complicated for gas. In a unitization agreement, when you set it up, you have to decide how much gas is on one side of the, of the, of the block line and how much gas is on the other. So basically, the two groups are coming together and saying, I own 60% of this, you have 40% of it, whatever. The problem is, you always get it wrong, because when you're doing this, you just haven't done enough drilling, you don't know what's down there. So you take a guess. This split, it's called the tract participation, this split will be wrong, so you set up a system to correct it over time. That's what redetermination does. You're redetermining the tract um, participation. The problem with that in gas is that you thought you had 60% of the gas, but after redetermination, it turns out you have 55%. Right? Because you got, you got your sums wrong at the start, you, you got your geology wrong, you're now correcting it. Okay? So you were what's called the overlifter. You've got less gas now than you used to. As the overlifter, you have to pay the underlifter the other side now goes up from 40 to 45. You have to pay them for the past. So not only do you do your volume go down from 60 to 55, but you have to use some of that 55 to repay the other side for what you have you overtaken the past. Right? So basically you have less gas even than your tract right? until you've repaid the past. A gas contract has two ways of working. You can have a depletion contract which sells what you have, so it kind of fits this slightly better. Or you have a supply contract under which you sell a fixed amount of gas or a, 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 a calculable amount of gas. Redetermination simply doesn't fit supply contracts. Because in a supply contract, I say, I will sell you 100 units of gas. I don't have those 100 units of gas anymore. I've got less than this, yeah. right? So under normal conditions, I will be in breach. So I have to do something to stop that. The, I, inside the contract, basically, we now need to sit down and sort it out between ourselves. But you have no incentive as the buyer to do that. You say, well, look, I wanted the 100 units of gas. I don't care. It's your problem to get them seller, producer. It's not my problem as a buyer that you don't have gas anymore. Um, why should you do that? 
um, and that really becomes a serious problem. And the other way of doing it is I, as a gas producer, have lots of gas fields and I simply substitute some gas from somewhere else into the supply contract to give it to you, but that assumes that I'm allowed to do that in the contract. Um, in a pure supply contract, I will be allowed to do that because supply contracts don't have a dedicated source, but most gas buyers, when they sign a contract, like to know that the seller's actually got some gas, so they want me to prove as a seller that I've got some gas. The only way of doing that is to show my reserves, and suddenly my reserve numbers are down, so I now need to show my reserves from elsewhere, and that's why it gets complicated. In essence, if I can substitute, I can get out the problem. But that then means I have to be able to transport the gas, I have to move gas around, I need third party access rights, remembering gas, it's always in the wrong place. Um, so I need something outside the contract to fix the problem. Um, a depletion contract ought to deal with it because I'm simply selling what I've got. But the last point is, remember that in a redetermination you don't um, make any new gas. What we're doing is playing a zero sum game, we're just pushing the same gas in amongst different people. So in theory, if the overlifter and the underlifter get together, they can sell the same volume to the buyer. The problem with that is very simple. It's called competition law, and we don't like um, multiple sellers of gas getting together. Joint selling is just evil as far as competition law is concerned. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen Dell. And I know most people were wanted us to cover other topics, including resource cars and many other topics. We can't cover all that right now. But with respect to resource car, to a resource cars, I will refer you to a video I did with Mr. Osai, who's, who is from Nigeria. We talked about our resource cars in detail, and I also did more videos with Atem Ding, who's, who is from South Sudan, and we covered the subject of our resource cars. So refer to those videos, and maybe in our other videos, we shall be able to cover all the comments and topics you wanted us to talk about. But for now, that marks the end of our last video with Stephen Dow. Stay tuned, do not forget to subscribe. And Stephen Dow, thank you very much. Thank you. Most of our viewers do love your videos. <laughs> thank you very much for your time and thank, thank you, you very much for this uh, knowledge. Uh, our viewers, stay tuned. Bye-bye.